currently we uh, crop 75% uh, of our country in a continuous cropping rotation of uh, growing canola, wheat, lupins and barley. Uh, we've been doing that for up to 25 years now. The remaining 25% is non-arable, it's creek country or hill country and so we run a self-replacing shorthorn beef herd. The reason why we've got cattle is mostly because we don't like sheep. We don't do grazing crops because cattle tend to make a mess of country when it's wet. We do graze our stubbles over the summer, but only lightly. I'm a great believer in uh, controlling summer weeds to maximise your water use efficiency in the crop. And I think we get more benefit economically by doing that than, grazing, than leaving the weeds grow and graze the weeds. They've been great for fleabane. Come back and clean it up 10 days after it's been sprayed. My father started no-till farming back in the late 70s. He went full no-till in the mid 80s. We started doing more and more of it. We started pushing the system more because it was handling it. Management's had to change over the time, but on the whole, we've been able to keep growing reasonable crops, getting good yields, maintaining our protein levels and maintaining our profits. The machine we use to plant with is a John Deere conserver pack. It's a machine that was designed in Canada. It's a 40 foot machine on 12 inch spacings. We have two centimetre GPS, which allows us to inter sow. Some people would say we're probably slightly overcapitalised on our machinery, but we'd say it maximises our labour efficiency. So I think it's a trade-off. Timeliness of action is very important to us. You know, if, uh, if a crop is supposed to be sowed on a certain date, we like to be sowing on that date. And same with when, um, if the crop's ready to harvest, I want to be there harvesting it. I don't like being behind, even only a couple of days, I find that very frustrating. The farm is a partnership between my wife and myself. We have one full-time employee. My father's uh, retired, but he still fronts up a fair bit of the time and is quite a big help to us. It's one of the challenges that we face labour. Um, we're an operation that is too big for two people, but not big enough for three. So at the moment it works really well because we're sort of two and a half full-time labour units and that works extremely well. As my father decides to slow down more, that's going to become more of an issue and it's one I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle just yet. Climate risk and production risk are two big challenges. I think that's probably the biggest challenges facing agriculture at the moment. We've seen a much, more, much higher increase in volatility in both markets and weather lately um, and that's been combined with an uh, increase in the cost of production so that's meant that uh, risk management has probably become the number one management issue. A livestock operation we try and um, conserve lots of fodder, lots of silage. We've got quite a bit of silage underground so that's a big help for us if we have a really tough spring or summer. For the cropping side, we believe that water use efficiency by taking out the summer weeds is very important. Timeliness of sowing is also very important. Uh, we do do some hedging on the cropping side. We don't on the cattle side. Grain storage and grain marketing. At the moment, I'm not, a, I haven't invested in grain storage on farm. Um, I'm still waiting to see how the grain markets pan out after deregulation. I'm not willing at the moment to spend a lot of capital putting up grain silos. I don't like sitting in a queue at a grain silo in town either, but at the same time, once it's in there, I know exactly what it is. I have no issues with weevils. I have no issues with weight loss, with getting paid, because all I have to do to sell it is make a single phone call to a buyer. Monitoring the cropping side is quite easy. It's you just stick the costs in a computer and your rainfall in and those sorts of things and a good computer program will spit it back out at you. Beef side is a lot harder. It's very difficult to be able to put good numbers on 
how your beef operation is um, performing. And it's also very, and because it's so difficult, it's one has to be very careful that if your numbers are wrong, you're making then bad decisions because of poor data. My wife and I have weekly meetings where we sit down and discuss the week ahead, what's happening um, in the bigger picture. Um, we do have a business plan. It's a fairly succinct business plan, but it still is there. We are very fortunate. We've got excellent networks. But at the end of the day, most of it still comes down to just sitting around the kitchen table, um, taking in good information. Uh, the other thing we like to do is make use of people like our accountant, our agronomist, our stud bull supplier, our vets. Like every family, I suppose, work-life balance is always a challenge, but we as a family try and make time. We try, if we're not busy on the farm, we always try and have the weekends off so we can have good family time together. And that doesn't always happen. It's always a bit of a challenge at times to, because when you live on in your workplace, it's very hard not to take your work home with you all the time. But we do try because family life is very important to us. Mm, it varies from season to season so that sometimes one, the farm might take precedence for a while if there's a really busy time and then we'll make up for it later with, with flexibility when things are a bit quieter on the farm. Yep.